Hey everyone, happy wine. Hi everyone. Good to see everybody here. How's it going, Dave? Another day in paradise. How about you, Lib? Doing well. I'm coming in from Houston, so you know, nice humid day, but still got some sunshine. And like I'm coming in uh, from Connecticut, so a little bit different. Nice sunshine, but um, definitely not humid. Yeah. I'm jealous you can actually wear a jacket out this time of year. It's kind of nice. <laughs> I'm jealous you're in short sleeves. So, I mean, it goes okay. both ways. I get it. I get it. Well, this is going to be fun tonight. We got some really great wines to taste. Uh, just to give everyone some insight, my name is Libby. I'm part of our wholesale team with One Hope Wine, and I have been with the company about 10 years. Um, so excited to jump on Facebook Live and chat about some wines with you. And um, yeah, everybody, I'm Dave. Uh, I, I'm on the wholesale side uh, here in New England. And uh, like Libby, I've been around for a little bit, about nine years, and um, really excited to be on here with everybody and uh, really excited to kind of start sipping through some of these, uh, these wines. They're pretty fun. Um, and just excited to share uh, a little bit of info about them and Kind of go back and forth with Libby throughout the uh, the evening here. Nice. I don't know about you, but I pulled down several wine glasses for this, and it reminded me of my restaurant days and having to polish glassware. Oh yeah. Every night. I know we both came from restaurants before we joined up with One Hope, so a little throwback to the good old days, and uh, it made me really miss going out to eat and dining out. So we're bringing absolutely the patio lifestyle for everyone tonight. Um, our perfect patio picks is kind of what we're naming this this evening. So we got some really fun, fresh, aromatic white wines we're gonna be trying. Dave's got the first one there for us. So how about we jump in? Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I always laugh, I'm like, I think about the restaurant side too, polishing glass over the, the hot water tub. Uh, you know, pre-opening a few bottles before shift, but um, I don't miss the stresses of it all that much. I mean, you get all walks of life and uh, oh yeah, I'm glad I have it under my belt, but I'm glad those days might be behind. There's uh, nothing, nothing worse than those server nightmares where you can't get to all your tables and nothing ever comes together and you wake up stressed out and oh yeah. It's scary when you get those all these years later. It's really yes, scary. It is. Um, but yeah, we have some some awesome wines for you guys tonight. Uh, three aromatic whites, um, and just some really cool uh, growing regions. Uh, I think the first two will go be going through Monterey County, so part of that Greater Central Coast AVA in California. Um, and honestly, I think you know, without drawing straws of which one's my favorite, this first one I'm pretty keen on. Uh, the Monterey County Riesling. Uh, I've actually been able to sample this one the most here prior to our, our chat. <laughs> uh, Glad you got warmed up. Yeah, absolutely. It's always important to warm up. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, anything in particular you want to know specifically, Liv, or, or is there anything um, that you don't know? Oh, good question. Uh, well, being that it's one of your favorites, what makes it stand out for you? I know for me, I just love the aroma on it. It's just really cool, yeah. crisp. It to just me, like it's going to be a light style of wine. Yeah, I, I love Riesling because it's a uh, it's a chameleon. It can be sweet, dry, everything in between. Uh, and I love ours because it has just a touch of sweetness. It's off dry, but really clean, really good acidity, so it makes your mouth water. Um, but it has that really classic, I know some, some people it might be off-putting, but it has that, um, if, if any of you have ever heard it, like petrol nose, tennis ball, it's a very yeah. distinct yeah. aroma that is unmistakable. You know, you can't mistake it for anything else. Um, mm -hmm. And our Riesling has it, it's spot on. Um, and I really think, uh, I think that's what I love most about aromatic whites um, is just kind of, before you even get it into uh, to sip, sip mode, uh, yeah. it's uh, what's on the nose. And all three of these have very distinct noses. 
Um, but this one to me might be my favorite. I love that about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think most people immediately they hear Riesling, they automatically assume sweet. So I think this is really fun to have something that's more off dry and not so right. very sweet. It's a little bit more crisp and has that nice acidic balance kind of on that finish. Like you said, it definitely made my mouth water on that first sip and it makes yeah. me more. So this is amazing. I love this one. I always laugh thinking about the blue bottle Rieslings that I didn't try when I was young, but I do remember being at the Thanksgiving, you know, table. Sure. Um, and those are sticky sweet and, and just kind of the, the even step back the, the quick kind of background on Riesling, you know, it, it's home territory, territory turf, uh, would be out in Germany, um, Alsace, France. Um, and really, uh, there you also see that wide range, but it's spread, you know, throughout the globe pretty pretty well. We have a ton of it here in the US yeah. um, between Washington, California, and here on the East Coast, New York. Finger Lakes, uh, right. they do a lot of this. So um, I know, I'm sure there's plenty of you that are joining tonight that are uh, part of uh, uh, the East Coast contingent. And um, <laughs> there's plenty of it spread throughout Virginia and New York for sure, um, all different expressions, but um, yeah, I, I feel the same way. I I think, you know, the way, best way to look at it, and I'm sitting on the patio, you're on the patio. Um, what's great about it is it does have that sweetness, so that fruit driven, but it's super clean. Um, and it makes you want to have sip after sip. It's lively. It kind of wakes up the taste buds from a slumber of whether it's cold weather or quarantine. Right. Um, you know, I think that's kind of a great way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, I wish that I could fire up the fire pit behind me and enjoy that, <laughs> but a little too warm here, but eventually fall weather, we'll do that. But yeah, I agree. This is just really fresh, really just easy drinking. Um, and I just wanted to point out the cause that we support with this Monterey County Riesling um, is our helping to educate children. So this bottle actually helps to fund literacy education for children across the globe. Um, and we've been able to provide over 22,700 weeks of literacy for kids. So I think that's just an amazing cause and uh, really helping to give back there. It's amazing. And I'm sure for those of you that are joining that are homeschooling uh, and or are teachers in distance learning, obviously you all understand uh, the tremendous amount of uh, gratitude uh, we all have for what you do and, and how important uh, education and literacy uh, is, especially in a time like this. Mm -hmm. um, with distance learning, I know for uh, for some it's, it's been a challenge. So yeah, yeah, thank you for all of you that are involved with that on a day to day. Cheers yeah. To you. Well, your wife is a teacher, so you're getting to see it firsthand what teaching via Zoom <laughs> looks like and I'm sure it's a challenge so it's it's amazing it's funny how uh the students just love um being able to contact teachers at all hours um oh, hearing yeah. the notifications start going off at 6 30 in the morning are amazing right just to simply say hi and I miss you it's that's uh, really it's cute. pretty funny that's awesome yeah Very absolutely profession absolutely um Funny enough, actually, I think the last time I had this, uh, we had an amazing dinner. And I think that's why I always love um, this wine is because I usually pair it out with a meal. I'm always thinking about it. Um, sure. My wife made a killer green curry. So a bunch of green onion, um, jalapeno, coconut milk so you get a richness and spiciness and that very vibrant you know oniony flavor it plays really well um I think that night we decided to go chicken uh as the as the add-on but even with pork or something like that um yeah. I love this with those spicy uh, style dishes definitely it just works really really well um, yeah this definitely takes me towards kind of Thai food and an easy takeout. I'm not as adventurous as you on cooking at home, so I admire that. I have not uh, brought on all those skills with different cuisine, but that's pretty awesome that you guys throw. Now's, now's the time to do it. I mean, I the greatest chefs in the world 
uh, their key to success is there are many burns along the way. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. Very um, true. And I'm sure even a few winemakers out there won't admit to it, but a few batches of vinegar have been possibly made. Um, but yeah, I, I see we're getting a question about off dry. Um, and so just kind of to address that, really the, the, the best way to put it is if you have a spectrum of bone dry and sweet, off dry is gonna kind of float in the middle. So you get some, some good sweetness without it being too sticky. I always look at sweetness as it kind of sticks to your mouth and stays there for a while. Um, honey, maybe? Yeah, exactly. honey, or even, you know, I always think about like one of my, um, one of my, you know, pieces of kryptonite would be lemon drop, you know, candies, the little suckers. And the, that flavor will stick with you for, for an hour after you have it. I think that's maybe why I love it. But you think about how that sweetness sticks to you. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of the best way to look at um, it being off dry is it gives you a touch of that sweetness, but at the same time, there's great acidity. It makes your mouth water. It makes you want to have another sip or another bite. Um, and when the weather gets warm, I just think it's that off dry style is perfect because you get all that fruit that you want um, without it being cloyingly sweet. So uh, I think you're going to notice a trend on, you know, a, a few of these wines being uh, mm -hmm. off dry and then uh, I think we'll finish up with one of the sweeter ones, but it's still delicious, so. Awesome. Yeah. Well, our second one for the night? Let's do it. Wonderful. Another Monterey County wine. This is our Gewürztraminer. And if you can see this here. Perfect. Dave's got it, too. My, my wine bottles are a little sweaty. It, you, that's when you know it's humid here. <laughs> Mine are out of the fridge and they haven't changed in temperature. I think we're already dipping down here to uh, almost 48 degrees. But, oh, wow. Um, it's funny, even actually you mentioning temperature. Mm -hmm. um, that even might be a cool thing to talk about, I guess, right? Because you're pulling these things out of the fridge. Um, not a hard and fast rule, but I think for me personally on these first two, the Gewürztraminer and the, that's just such a fun one to say. I could say yeah. it all day. Um, you can fumble over right here and there, exactly. Yeah, it makes me sound like I can actually pronounce it well, even though you know very well I get caught up. It's tricky, it. yeah. But um, I feel like for both of these, I like them fridge cold. Um, and what that means is it's going to be usually most people's fridge is going to be around 40 degrees or so. So give yourself that swing of like 39 to 45, somewhere in there. Um, I just think at that point you get a ton of the, you still get the aromatics. Um, if you chill it down too much, you're not going to really get, it's just kind of flat line for a little bit until it comes up to temp. You dull down yeah. kind of what's on the nose. Sure. Um, Temperature makes a really big difference. I mean, if oh, it's yeah. too cold, you just can't taste anything. And I think that's a great point. But yeah. So what did you say? This is fridge temperature? This is what was that? I'm sorry. How would you describe drinking this at fridge temperature? Yeah, fridge fridge temperature. So okay. you get it out of the fridge and maybe within you know five minutes uh, after pulling it out, it's at the right spot. So um, cool. yeah, that's kind of where I go with the Gewürztraminer and even the Riesling. Mm -hmm. um, man, night and day on the nose. Oh yeah. This one, it, I guess I just smell it and I feel like it's gonna just coat my mouth. It just has like just much bigger, bolder aromatics than the Riesling did. So <laughs> as, a, as a native Southern Californian lib, uh, when I used to live there, a few of my neighbors used to have gardenia bushes and that oh, little yeah. beautiful white flower to me, I'm smelling a lot of white flower on this. Yeah. Um, it, it brings me back to my old neighborhood, my old haunt. Love that. The memories that are associated to smells is always a, a good thing. Always fun where things Absolutely. take. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other fun thing with a lot of these wines. I, I mean, I want to enjoy them all on the patio. Um, and I think that's, uh, or the porch, if you will, um, right. I think, uh, a lot of great memories have been made, uh, even in the few years of homeownership on this house, on our mm -hmm. back porch. Um, 
and I know for a couple of them, there was definitely one or two of these wines there. So uh, it's funny how you always equate. I always remember the experience by or the wine by the experience that I've had. Um, Absolutely. Personally. I just so. think that's the coolest part about wine, you know, bringing people together and getting to open a bottle and you do create amazing memories, but you get to talk about the wine, what you love about it. I mean, food is the same thing too, right? But wine is just such a special thing. And I love that we get to do this for work one, but just share, share our love for wine with everybody out there tonight, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. It's Definitely a bit sweeter, and I would say if I was to rate this 1 to 10 sweetness, I'm going to take a stab, I'd say 8. Gotcha. Sweet? How do you yeah, it, say personally? Yeah, it definitely creeps up on the sweetness, but I, you know, I think too, as those of you that are tasting with us, uh, what you're going to see is we're progressively getting sweeter, mm -hmm. so um middle of the road definitely works for me you know that six seven you know okay uh, this is this is kind of what's great is what's an eight to you um right. for those that love you know um super sweet things they're going to be at a four and uh that's why it's always fun to chat these things out because i'm not right you're not necessarily right we're all yeah, kind yeah. of experiencing it at a different uh absolutely different way but if for nothing else Verstraminer, lots of like floral aromatics. Mm -hmm. um, and this one to me, so actually this wine and the Riesling, I would say like spicy foods would be killer because they have that good little bit of sweetness. But also I see these often um, many a times around Thanksgiving. And I think, you know, if you're thinking about all the different meals you can have with it, um, talk about two totally different spicy Thai food and like traditional Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving food. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I mean, like a honey baked like, ham. I feel like yeah, absolutely. With this. Yeah. You're paralleling some of the sweetness in it, that honeyed note to it. Right. Um, I thought about maybe like a, like baked brie with like a jam, like jam, wrap it in big a jam. Bowl. Yeah. And then, Wheat thins to dip is my go-to. That's my quick appetizer if anyone needs one. Really Are you team wheat thins or team Triscuit? Oh, I gotta go wheat thins. I'm right there with you. If I had to choose for the rest of my days, wheat thins or Triscuit, but I will tell you that woven salty Triscuity crunch. Pretty great. I mean... <laughs> We're splitting hairs when we're deciding this between is true. Wheat and This triscuits. is true. We could go on for a while with our favorite snacks, but those are some solid choices. Absolutely. You're not going to miss with that brie and fig jam on oh, top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you, well, now let's, now let's go down this rabbit hole. Are you uh, <laughs> almonds or peanuts? Oh, peanuts. Mmm. I think it takes me back to like being at like a baseball game when I was a kid and just like cracking open. Oh man, I wasn't even shell. thinking about yeah. peanuts and shell. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe I have to change it from almond to like pistachio and peanut because now they're both in shell. Go almond cashew. I don't know. <laughs> so many different ways to go about it. Like a trail mix and call it a day. Then you have the best of everything. There we yeah, go. especially the M and M's. That's definitely oh, yeah. the best kind of bag. The best part. That's awesome. So uh, a little bit about the uh, the cause that we've paired with our Gewurz demeanor. Um, we are help. This bottle helps to fund resources to help eliminate the challenges of rare genetic diseases. So definitely an amazing cause and something that might not get as much attention as others. So it's really neat that we're able to support that. Um, with this amazing bottle. And again, these wines are all part of our fresh picked pack that is on sale this month. Um, you can get all three bottles that we're tasting tonight. Normally they retail for 90 and they're on sale for 58.50 with the purchase of six other bottles of wine. So it's a nice little add on perk that you can, you can buy on our website if you're interested. That's an awesome deal. And especially as, um, Everybody's starting to get into warmer temps. Again, 
having a wine chilled down, you know, fridge cold. Um, I think as the weather gets warmer, these are kind of the ones that you first start reaching for. Oh, yeah. You're kind of waking up from, again, from waking up from hibernation and it kind of just pokes the palate, gets you going. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of wine in my fridge. I'm running out of space. I'm having to lay them down. I need some new organizational things because, I mean, this quarantine life is just driving me to pull out bottles almost every I'm gonna, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I have the opposite problem. Um, all the little storage I had is running dry because of quarantine. Okay. I'm I think fast enough is what's happening. Okay. <laughs> you've become a collector, not a connoisseur. This is uh, true. Or a consumer, I guess. Yeah. But I think in that vein, we both have young ones. And uh, man, when the day is done. Oh, yeah. Nothing helps ease it. That is the nightcap I look forward to most. Absolutely. Yeah. My little girl is 17 months, so she's definitely hitting that nice nice age of expressing herself, you could say. So yeah, wine always sounds good. <laughs> My little guy's 14 months and all I can tell you is uh, he tends to eat things he shouldn't when he's with me. I think it's great parenting. I'm exposing him to all sorts of different flavors, expanding his palate, 100%. whether it be dirt, leaves, um, some of the beautiful grass that's coming in now yeah uh, dandelions i mean people cook with dandelions it's delicious and he's munching away on it so. that's great training i like yeah style. you know <laughs> the scary part is when he starts licking rocks out of the driveway we make sure it's just the lick to understand minerality and not eating the rock that's kind of right trick. yeah we'll leave it we'll draw the line there for a little grant <laughs> and i swear my wife's around so uh this is not child um you know we're not putting the child in danger we're just letting them, make, you know, test things out. Exactly. We gotta test the waters a little bit. Well, cool. You wanna jump into our last wine? I mean, have you tried number two? I feel like we've been chatting away. Just wanna make sure you get. If for nothing else, Gravertstraminer. Now you all know how to say it. Um, this is gonna be a little bit rounder, um, touch more sweetness than the Riesling, um, kind of middle of the road sweetness. Or uh, for some of you that like drier wines, it's going to be even more than middle of the road sweetness. Um, but it's got a, just a ton of really great uh, stone fruit to it. Um, and to me, it's funny, as I'm sitting here sipping on it a little more, it almost has this spiciness. So again, when we talk about, you know, when we were talking about fridge cold, as this becomes a little warmer, um, you'll even get different profiles in it. So it's almost yeah. like... Uh, like ginger or something. It's got like a- Yeah, I definitely <laughs> something. And I agree, as it kind of opens up and the temperature warms up, wines just change naturally. And I think that's also what's so fun about wine is you can open a bottle tonight, it's gonna taste a little different tomorrow and it just keeps aging, improving and always fun. You know, that's a really cool point you just brought up, Libby. Um, you know, I think sometimes, uh, I don't know about you, but when I'm done uh, with my wines in the bag, sometimes what I do is just to understand how the wines progress. I'll check in on that bottle over the course of three or four days just to understand it. You know, people always ask, oh, when should I, you know, how, how long is the wine good for after you open it? And there's a lot of factors in it, you know, how much yeah. is left in the bottle. But sometimes the best advice um, is just to try it for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, learn by doing for sure too you might yeah, not and, love day three but someone else will still enjoy it and that's quite all right yeah and the wine will change and evolve and that's always good to know as well you know i think uh and and don't feel guilty about not opening a wine and finishing it um i know you and i don't that's for sure but yeah, uh i don't always have that problem <laughs> I don't either, but if my if my better half is not around to enjoy a glass or two with me, um, yes. I have no problem uh, putting it back in the fridge and mm -hmm. checking it out the next night. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing to think about um, as you're kind of on this journey in wine. All of you, you know, it's good to kind of understand how the wine ages itself. So um, that's always great to see. Yeah, great point. 
All right, well, our last wine, we have a North Coast Muscat. This is our reserve. Um, this definitely sweetest of the bunch. Absolutely, that's why we're tasting it last. Let me get a look. It's sticky. It's got some good sweetness, but in a, in a great way. Um, it sure does. So I went a little patio friendly and put some frozen fruit in my glass tonight. I just thought, you know, let's get crazy. Ooh, the stainless steel. Nice. This is a proprietary mix as well. So I'm coming at you with both, uh, both angles. I love it. Yeah. I mean, um, whether we don't need to be that fancy. You don't always have to have stemware out on your patio. Not at all. Just do what works for you. I'm all about the stainless steel cups, especially yeah. something that's like this easy drinking, very enjoyable. I, Add some fruit to it, make a, a slushy, you know, yes. we can turn this. I made one earlier. I apologize. It's a little melty, um, but it still tastes very delicious. So let's, I, um, yeah. I, I always, I, what's, uh, what's your blend on your slushy? So I did a little peaches, mango and pineapple and just a bit of strawberry. One of those great little frozen, uh, fruit medleys, if you will. I like it. <laughs> Kept it like easy. It. Yeah. That sounds phenomenal. Um, count me in on that one. All right. I'm willing to share my secrets. You're welcome to try it out. Oh man, I did a I did a little little variation on that. I uh, on my blended one, I did uh, a little bit of pear. Mm. Um, I put in some peach as well, um, but instead of kind of adding anything else, I just did some uh, some lemon juice, some like half a lemon. I made oh, it. There's a there's a, I think there's a, a glass inside that's being enjoyed. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just, it's a I winning like, recipe is what you're saying. It's a winning recipe. I just like it. And if you want to make it pretty, mine's not pretty. It's just delicious. If you want to make it pretty, throw some red fruit in there, like you were saying, some strawberries, yeah. something like that. I chose raspberries. Um, but yeah, I like that little squeeze of lemon to kind of just brighten it all up. And um, God, when peaches come into season here this summer, it's going to be awesome. Oh, I love yeah. uh, I love some trash trash can peaches mm. you know what that is i've heard of it but enlighten our view Where you ha they're so juicy you have to eat it over a trash can or you're gonna oh, wear okay. it you know um that's that's my favorite kind of peach but um yeah so this wine the best way to put it is it's gonna be sweeter but it's mm -hmm. um it's not overbearing it's got this really great um bright burst of fruit to it um and you feel it's really round you know it kind of stays yeah, there yeah. it's got some it's got some length on it um and if it's i think this is a great lesson like both of us clearly have done this with you know blending it up um, right. if i had a day like you did that's where i'd be going with this slushy you know add in yeah. a little even if you want to booze it up a little more add in some peach schnapps Right. Um, if you plan on getting wild on the back patio, but yeah. if it's not Peach your vodka, cup of tea, I mean, get crazy. There you go. <laughs> if it's not your cup of tea as a standalone, I think um, blending it up with some fresh fruit um, can really pick it up a notch. And I think this just goes to show you how versatile this is. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes people are put off by uh, by scat, you know, that idea that it's going to be just yeah, gross yeah. and sweet. But it's Not super that. versatile, and there again, there's so many expressions of it, and um, this is a pretty fun one. Absolutely, I think everyone has their opinions on do they, you know, love or not love sweet wines, and so you can kind of cater to your audience, like we've been talking about. But I think just on its own, this is just beautiful. I love the nose. I love that fuller mouth, like you said, and just that lingering finish. And again, it kind of just leaves you wanting more. I think all of these wines really deliver on that where you're just like, wow, I just want to hang out and just keep on enjoying and really just delicious wines. I think our winemaker, Mari, really hit the nail on the head with these. Hit it out of the park. Yeah, she did. She crushed it. It's, um, 
and two again you know like uh, like you said if people if sweet wine like this isn't necessarily uh what they're into always think about the pairing too you know um when you start thinking about dessert courses or something like that if that's where your if your mind's going there um i have a bad sweet tooth when it comes to dessert uh I always think about just kind of like that fresh fruit tart, you know, I can see right. it. It's got kiwi, strawberry, blackberry. It looks beautiful. It's got that creamy custard. So if you think about it, it matches, you know, it's got that richness to it, but it's also got very bright fruit profile right. like this one does. Um, yeah, I mean. Love it. You can kind of go across the board with it. Right? Even yeah, if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a fan of just, I mean. Wine and dessert, you can't go wrong there. It's a done deal. <laughs> Count me in. Yes, it's, please. Uh, it's a fun one. Yeah. Well, shall we kind of wrap things up? These have been amazing wines. I don't want to take anyone's time too much further on this beautiful Wednesday. Uh, but if you all have been enjoying these wines we've been talking about, we'd love to have you um, you know, go onto our website, onehopewine.com. You can purchase these specific wines and others as well. You can join our preferred customer program, which is free to join this month and next month. And that'll unlock some great discounts for you uh, when you purchase six bottles or 12 bottles. You'll get a discount up to 30% on those wines. Um, we'd also love to suggest that you can have your own virtual happy hour. I think this has been pretty fun. Dave and I don't always get to just hang out and drink wine. So, you know, you could do the same thing with one of our cause entrepreneurs in our, in our One Hope community. Um, so a lot of people that are looking for kind of a side hustle and being able to share and drink wine with their friends and make an income while they're making an impact are joining our community. So you can go to our website again. Yeah, I think as we I think as we've shown, you know, it doesn't even have to be something crazy serious. I think sometimes people get nervous about this. Um, I'm talking to a friend. Yeah, a few exactly. thousand miles away. You know, it's uh, it's as simple as this. Just kind of getting on there, talking about wine, life, Team Triscuit, Team Wheatbin. What you That's know, right. where <laughs> your loyalties lie. Um, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as sharing what we're doing, uh, how we're giving back. Um, it's really not that hard. Uh, yeah. It's super easy. It's just different. You know, we've all learned to uh, to adapt in these last two months to just kind of a different way of doing things. And this is kind of a great way to uh, uh, to bring that experience in home now. Absolutely. Via the computer. Well, and what I love is that I didn't have to clean my house and buy a bunch of food and entertain people for happy hour. We just get to hang out on the patio and pull up the. That's, that's the that's the best part. We both exactly. have young ones. You don't know what's going on on the inside of that wall. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, oh, yeah. it, there could be finger painting with tomato sauce. I I think it's actually bedtime. But um, uh, that's the great thing about this is yeah, it's uh, super flexible. It can fit kind of into your, you know, your day to day and, and how uh, things are going for you. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. That's great you advice. You doll it up. Yeah, definitely. Well, if someone is watching that got invited by a friend, feel free to visit their website and you'll be able to join if you'd like as a part of their team, or we'll leave a link here that you can click uh, onehopewine.com slash join, and you can find out a little bit more information about joining our cause entrepreneur community. Uh, it's a really great deal to sign up with us right now. It's $29. So, you know, if this sounds like something that you might want to do, feel free to check us out and we'd love to welcome you to the One Hope family. So hopefully y'all had fun and enjoyed our, our patio weather that we got going on. Hopefully you have some good weather wherever you are and we can do this again sometime. Agreed. I would love to get back on here and just kind of, you know, talk through it all again. And uh, maybe by next time, Libby, uh, you'll be at 100 degrees and I'll have full foliage behind me. So, um, yeah. I'm not looking forward to that part, but I'd love to do this again, Dave. So let's if you have 100, I have 75. So that's where my mind is. That's Every right. man for himself. <laughs> I love it. Well, cheers, happy Wine Wednesday, and we'll catch you next time.